Well, good morning, Dr. Deo. Church, won't you stand with us? And if you're new here, so welcome. Won't you greet one or two people that are standing next to you? Just tell them that you look much better than on your pro Facebook profile picture. That's so good to have you in this place. I just want to start off with a quick story. If you're going through some stuff right now, I'm referring to a story in the Old Testament in Chronicles. King Jehoshaphat said to um, God, said to his people that you will not fight this battle on your own. And this is where we are today. God says that he will fight this battle and he did it. When he died on the cross, he took all of those stuff on his shoulders. Amen. So let's worship God in this place. Here we go.
praise in this place this morning. And amen, amen, amen. Well, welcome, welcome, welcome to church. Uh, you guys can go ahead and please be seated. Oh man, I love that song. The battle belongs to you. No matter what battles that we're facing, we can hand those over to God because we know that he's fighting for us on our side. But you didn't come here for an early message. Uh, um, uh, my name is Marty McCrary, and I have the honor and privilege of being one of the pastors here at Doxadeo. And it is such an honor to serve you and your family. And right now, we want to take a moment to welcome all of our first-time guests, whether you're here in the building or online watching. Can we put our hands together and welcome all of our first-time guests? Yes, we are so excited and thankful that you have decided to join us today uh, for worship. And we want love to connect with you. We want to connect with you. All you have to do is text Doxideo to 94000. Or actually, you can go out if you're here. And you can go and meet my friend Ami over in the Connections area uh, with an iPad. And he would love to connect with you and give you an actual gift. And uh, spoiler alert, it's uh, Panthers tickets. They're... They're $10 right now. I don't know if you know, so they're coming cheap. Kidding, kidding. Uh, but we would love to give you a gift, and we would love to connect with you and show you different ways that you can get involved in the community of our church. And one thing that Omni may mention to you is Trunk or Treat. Trunk or Treat is one of my favorite times or one of my favorite things that we get to do and be a part of because we come together as a community and not only do we dress up and we decorate our cards, which are uh, some are super creative and amazing, but it's a time that we can come together and we can actually have fellowship and be in community. And it's a time that we can invite some of our friends and some of our family that may never set foot in the church, but they'll say yes to some candy and dressing up in a costume. I'm one of them. <laughs> but we would love to see you and your family there and your friends. And uh, we're about to get ready and step into a time of worship. Uh, if you want to go ahead and stand up on your feet, stand up on your feet, stand up on your feet. I'm going to pray for us and we're going to continue. Father God, I thank you that we could come here today for only one reason and that's for you, Jesus. Father God, I pray that you would give each and every person here peace right now. Give us a clear mind. Whatever that may be going on outside of these walls, whatever distractions may be happening, I pray that you would silence those things right now. That way we may be able to be open to hearing your word, to receiving your love, God. We pray that you would just move in this place and that you would be with us, Lord. We love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody say it.
sit with that moment for for a reality it's um, in a moment like this we, we come Sunday after Sunday for some of you you've been doing it since you were little for some of you came back to church in later years but and if in the midst of all of this at the end we just experience the lights and the music and the stuff and not the goodness of God then we missed it and uh, I'm guilty sometimes especially for me because Sundays are work. You come in and you do all the things and we can miss the moments of the goodness of God. And so just for a moment, I want you to close your eyes. I'm going to pray for us, but I want you to just close your eyes and I want you just to receive the reality that you have a good father that wants good gifts for your life. For some of you, that's a really hard context because you didn't grow up with a good father present in your life or maybe you don't have a great relationship with your dad. Others of you, you have a great relationship with your dad, but Man, just for a moment, you have a good father that loves you and wants good for you, speaks hope and life and purpose over you, that sees you as you are, loves you and calls you to something beautiful. Receive that this morning. Father, we are, we're in awe of you. God, some of us have been journeying with you for a long time in the highs and the lows. Others in this room perhaps are newer to this. Others still just considering what it would be like to be in a relationship with a God they can't see. And I just pray that your goodness would overwhelm us this morning. I pray there'd be moments throughout this service where people would be reminded that this is more than just a Sunday activity. There's something that you're doing. It's who you are. God, we pray this, we ask this, we thank you for this in the matchless name of the resurrected Jesus. Amen, amen. Hey, thanks for worshiping with us. Will you take a moment before you're seated to tell somebody around you good morning, maybe tell them your name if you don't mind to do that, and uh, then after that, you guys can grab a seat. All right. Well, welcome to church. Welcome to Doxadeo Church. Glad you guys are here. My name is Chris, and I have the privilege of being one of the pastors here, and uh, now I think one of the shortest pastors here on staff, which is weird because I'm 6'2", or at least I was at one point in my life, uh, but we're glad you guys are here. Glad you're a part of this. Those of you that are watching online, just want to say uh, thanks for joining us every week, and we hope that one day uh, you'll be right here in this physical room. We know we have people watch from all over the city and different states and different places, but uh, come and be a part of this and uh, join us here in the room. Hey, Hey, how you guys doing? We okay? I mean, I know it's going, uh, Marty referenced it, it's going bad for the Panthers, but life is okay, right? We're going to be all right. Uh, we're glad you guys are a part of this morning, and I want to kind of just uh, give you a couple of snapshots of where we're headed. I'll introduce you a little bit further to my friend Donnie, who's going to be speaking today, but uh, I want to say this. One of the things that we dream of, like this is, God broke my heart for this many, many years ago, but one of the things we dream of right here at Doxa Day of Charlotte is that we want to see lost sons and daughters that become found. Lost sons and daughters that recognize who they are in Christ, but it doesn't just stop there. So we want to reach lost sons and daughters, but then we want to equip them to become city changers. We want to see what happens on Sundays connected to Mondays. And so I want to just kind of share two quick stories of city changers that are uh, just beautiful. And this is the dream. This is what we want to be a part of. Uh, one of them, I, I saw him in here this morning, Patrick Mitchell, that you guys know, many of you would know, uh, started just a beautiful organization called Renowned Collective. Uh, and they're putting clean water wells in Africa. This is an amazing way to connect a faith that might just reside on a Sunday into the life of Monday and everything that's happening. But it doesn't stop there. Uh, you guys know of Patrick. We partner with them here. Uh, your guys' generosity here empowers them. But also, we have another person who serves here at this church. Her name is Debbie. She serves as a part of our guest services team, who is also a city changer. And she may not even know it. She may not ever say that about herself, but she is that very thing. Uh, she came to Patrick and said, hey, her day job, uh, as she serves here again in guest services during the week, but her day job is that she oversees a preschool. That's what she does on Mondays and throughout the week. And so she was trying to figure out how to connect kingdom, <clears throat> excuse me, with the things that she's doing doing every single day. So she took this little preschool and said, hey, let's do a drive. They did, I think it was called wheelies. We may have a video. We, wheelies for something. I can't remember how they phrased it, but it was basically a drive where they, they had these kids uh, do laps. 
Like a little exercise, right? <clears throat> it's not COVID anymore, so they're, they're doing this, right? So they, uh, they raised money, though. It's a beautiful thing. Raised money, and their goal was $10,000 to put a well on, and they raised $12,000, this little preschool. Now, no pressure, but they were all like under five and under three feet. I'm just saying, right? So this is amazing, guys. This is like taking what's spoken of and what's lived and what we, talk, what we teach and talk about on a Sunday and putting it into practice on Monday. These are two city changers doing something of faith. And this is the dream that we see lost sons and daughters recognize that there's a father that knows their name, that we reach the lost and then we empower them and equip them to become city changers. That's the dream. And so uh, I just want to applaud them. And I want to applaud you guys. Uh, when you're generous here, it enables these kind of things. And I want to say this one more thing before I hand off to Donnie. Uh, we're coming into the end of the year. I know it doesn't feel like that to you guys, but we're the last stretch. Three months. It's coming. So your Christmas list is getting ready. You don't even know. Some of you already have an Amazon list somewhere with someone in your family. and You just haven't seen it yet, but that's a real thing and it's happening. And so I want to ask you to lean in with this family as we're starting this beautiful new thing in the city. We've got a shortfall as we're looking towards the end of the year and we've got to close some ground and I believe that we can do it but we need you guys we want to keep seeing stories like this play out in the lives of individuals we want to see lost sons and daughters that find hope in Christ and we want to see people empowered to live out their faith on Mondays so we're going to talk a little bit more about this next week but I want to ask you will you be generous to this church Will you be generous through this church to the things that God wants to do in the city? Uh, I am so grateful for this. And again, I'll talk more about this next week. But we have some, uh, a couple of organizations and some individuals that have put together a matching fund that will be good for the next three months. And I'll tell you more about the numbers of that next week. But it's going to double all the dollars that come in. And we desperately need that to finish the year well, to be able to do the things that God wants us to do, I believe, in this community. And so uh, just right now, the thing that I would say to you is, don't underestimate what your generosity does. Whether you, you may feel it's small, but every single thing matters. So if you're a first time person to this church, you say you wanna be a part of something that makes the community better, we wanna invite you to do that right here. Well, we've been in a series called Waves, talking about this idea that the glory, the knowledge of the glory of, the God, glory of God would fill the earth. And so we've been talking about what does that look like, not just on a, a collective level, but on a personal level as well. And so in just a moment, you're going to hear from my friend Donnie. And Donnie is a part of our global team, our global leadership team for Doxideo, part of the family. And he's been here this last week. And I'll just say, I've said this to my wife a couple of times, so I'll brag on you, Donnie. He's just got wisdom. There were several times in conversations where he just dropped a little nugget of truth as it was no big deal, and he would move on. And 30 minutes later, I would still be thinking about it. There was a couple of times where he mentioned something about passages of scripture that I have taught on that I'd never thought about from that perspective. So no, no pressure, Donnie, but we expect you to drop that kind of truth on us today. But I'm so grateful for Donnie. You guys are going to love him. I, I want to say a quick prayer for us that we just sit in this moment, that we can receive the word. And then you're going to take a look at the screens and then Donnie will join us. Father, thank you for the moments. I pray that your Holy Spirit would speak through the day, speak through your word. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Take a look at the screens. It is so great being with you on this beautiful Sunday morning here in Charlotte. So you heard my name is Dani. I, I'm married to a wonderful lady named Yuarita. I suppose you're going to struggle to, to kind of just use that name. And uh, I live in a city uh, in central South Africa called Bloemfontein, um, which is also going to be another foreign word. A beautiful city, deeply challenged in many ways, um, but also seeing something of God's great work in that city. And uh, we have three children. Um, and uh, of course, uh, Africa. Afrikaans is my first language, so I'm, I'm English second language, so if I mess up your language somewhere along the line already, I, uh, I apologize in advance. 
But we are talking about waves, and we're talking about the wave of God's glory in this world. And, uh, you know, in the beginning when I joined Doxadeo many years ago, uh, I was fascinated by the fact that this is such a driving force in our vision, this, this scripture, um, Habakkuk uh, 2, um, and just the picture of the knowledge of the glory of God that covers uh, this whole planet like the waters cover the sea. And uh, so as I journeyed with this, I realized it's not just the content of this verse, but it's actually the setting of this verse that is so important for us just to grasp in terms of what God means by this little vision statement that, that he sees this picture. You know, we can see many other pictures. We can see pictures of despair and lostness and brokenness in this world, but this is the picture that God sees. He sees a planet covered with his glory, saturated with who he is, saturated with his, his presence. And uh, if, we, if we look at this little book, uh, three chapters, it's actually like a little drama. And I'm, I'm a very visual guy, so I see this drama in, in three little acts. The, the first one, which makes this book actu actually very beautiful, is the fact that um, unlike many other prophetic books in the Old Testament, this is not a one way where the prophet speaks to the people kind of voicing um, God's intent. This is now the prophet speaking to God. So this is like a little struggle book. Um, and it's actually, if you read the whole book, it feels like, I, I don't know if you ever read those kind of books in the Bible. I don't suppose this is on your reading list. Uh, I want to read like Habakkuk. But uh, it's, it's like a bit of a, it, it feels like a little negative book. There's a whole lot of negative energy in this story. And the three acts is actually amazing. So the first act is the, is the prophet um, standing and he's engaging God. And you can sense the main character on stage as despair. I mean, the prophet is crying out to God. He's saying the following in verse 2. He says, how long, Lord, uh, must I call for help? And you do not listen or cry out to you about violence, and you do not save. I mean, that is like, uh, I, want to, I want to turn the page. This is like, this is not good news. And you can just sense the despair and the lostness in this, this first act as, the, as the, the, the primary character is lostness and despair. And then crazy as this book goes, and many of the Old Testament book goes, uh, we see that God responds to the prophet. I mean, we have a God that loves speaking. And uh, God responds to Habakkuk, and he says the following. Um, he says, look, um, verse 2 to verse 6, I'm just kind of capturing the moment. He says, look, I'm raising up the Chaldeans, that bitter, impetuous nation that marches across the earth, um, earth's open spaces to seize territories their own. What is God saying? Habakkuk, this is even going to get worse. <laughs> you think this is terrible. You think the fact that I'm not listening to you is the worst problem. You have enemies. Kind of, they, they're stepping up towards you. I mean, if, if you haven't yet turned the page, this would be a good place to flip over to the second act. A first act filled with tension filled with anticipation of even larger challenges that we have to face. And then as, as the prophet goes into the second act, it's immediately as if there's this little moment, like a, you can easily miss it. But for me, the beautiful thing is that the rest of the Bible writers did not miss this moment. As, as Habakkuk says the following, verse two of, uh, verse four of, of chapter two, he says, he's talking about the, the unjust, the guys now coming and stepping into this space to bring even bigger chaos. And he says, look, his ego is inflate, inflated. He's without integrity. And then, this little sentence, and as he, as he says the sentence, a new character appears on stage, and he says the following, he says, but the righteous one will live by his faith. It feels like it's such a, such a small sentence. What does this change? But this is a new character on stage. This is an introduction of something of life within the context of challenge. 
And this, this new character immediately introduces a whole new set of rules in this, in this space. Paul reads this and he captures it. Galatians 3 verse 1, Romans 1 verse 17, the Hebrew writer captures exactly these same words. The righteous will live by faith. And there's something of immediate, like, a, like an open invitation that enters into the room of lostness and despair. And then this book goes on and the drama kind of unfolds. And it's even worse. Like it's, it's the chapter of woes. Now, I mean, if you really want to get negative, go read those woes. It's five of them. And it's the prophet just speaking about the challenge in terms of rich and poor and all the, the corruption and talking about leaders that's terrible and substance abuse and, and idolatry. It's like, it's like so negative. But as this new character appears on stage called Faith, it opens the door for another character to appear. Because right in the middle, can you believe it, of the most negative act, the most negative chapter, the negativity, negativity is like loaded right in the middle of that. Verse 14, but the knowledge of the glory of God will cover the earth. And it's almost as if I can see on stage, it is, and this is where you have to kind of stick with me as I get visual on this, because this is now this crazy scene. There's little character, faith appears, and then it is Luciano Pavarotti that steps onto the scene. I can just see him. I can just sense that voice. I can just sense how this transforms this whole picture of negative into something new as God says there's something of his glory that that beautiful beautiful Hebrew word that he uses here is the word kabot and it means weight it's also used to talk about the abundance of God it's talk it talks about the sum total of everything that God is and in this massive chapter of despair right in the same it is now God's glory that is visible. And then there's a third act. And you can suddenly see how the entering of faith and glory into this picture of despair suddenly changes the character of the last chapter of this book and it ends in this beautiful beautiful song that I will now get to just just celebrating the goodness of God and it's almost as if I looked at this at this book just out of a meta narrative and asked the question you know what is God busy saying here what is he actually doing how can this thing of faith and glory create this wave that can actually change current circumstances and looking at this in my journey with God, I realized that, you know, faith is much more than just this little dependence on God. We many times use this word saying, you know, faith is like just being dependent on God. And many times for Christians, faith would mean something of just addressing eternity, you know, finding our place in heaven and knowing that we have assurance of salvation for someday. But the beauty of this picture is that the moment that faith arises, uh, uh, arrives on the, on the stage, it changes the reality in the current. It's not something out there. It's an immediate effect. The presence of God, the weight of his, of his character, the beauty of his abundance is suddenly invited into that space of brokenness. And faith suddenly becomes a new mechanism. When, when, when Habakkuk writes, he says, the righteous shall live by faith. This oxygen in faith. The moment that faith happens, life is born, death is challenged. In this picture of faith, we also see perspective being changed. This reality of, of negativity and despair suddenly carries something of a new perspective. God is present in the challenge and that gives in the third act this massive, uh, just, just a portion of hope. The way that we look at things cannot be the same. 
Faith not only brings life, it changes perspective, but faith also opens the door for hope. Faith opens the door for anything to be possible. And when we read that last little song of Habakkuk, we just see this thing, you know, even if nothing changes, I will still praise God. I will still honor God. And how is it possible that this small character in this B section of a verse, as it enters into this space, can, can make such a big difference? And that kind of took me in my journey and over many seasons and difficult seasons in life and church and leadership and everything to a very a story that is very dear to me. So as I share this this morning, I, I did not, I didn't think I'd, I'd come to Charlotte to share this, but this is now a deep conviction of the Dani story. It's a story in, in Isaiah chapter seven, and it's, I, I love this story. It's, it's about King Ahaz. And I've, I've really, over many years, I think I've preached this sermon about a hundred times. Um, I, I've, I've come to love this guy. He's, he's, like, he's just like me. Um, I, and uh, it, I, I think looking at Ayaz, I think he spent more time in the bakery that in, than in the gym. Um, he was not like this agile, ready to fight king. Um, because what happens here in verse, verse, uh, uh, verse one of chapter seven, Isaiah, Ahaz receives news of two guys kind of just pairing up to come challenge him. And it's very interesting. It is, uh, th they are called, um, they're called Rezin and Pekka. I don't know, I, I can see like a little packet of nuts. In South Africa, we have like these little pack, packets of nuts. You get like all different kind of nuts and raisins in there. And I can just see, so this is a packet of nuts. <laughs> these guys, the nuts are coming after him. The nutty guys. And uh, he, he, he gets this news, they, they, they're coming. They, they got now going to attack him. They tried Jerusalem. They were not successful, but now they're coming for him. And then in verse 2, it is so crazy. Um, as, as the Bible says, um, he, the second por portion of that verse says, they were so terrified that they trembled like trees shaking in the wind. Have you ever been that scared? <laughs> You're just trembling like a tree shaking in the wind, and you can just see this guy. This is a big challenge. And then, like in Habakkuk, God appears on the scene, and he invites Ahaz into a space of faith. He invites him into a space of understanding that he can give life in a situation of death, that he can give perspective of possibility and the impossible, that he can give the guarantee of transformation in this current reality. So the prophet goes to Ahaz and uh, he says to him, verse three, um, he says, tell the king to be alert, verse four, and to stay calm and not to be frightened or disturbed. The anger of this king Rezin and Pekka uh, is no more dangerous than the smoke from two smoldering sticks of wood. I mean, what a beautiful language. It's, it's God saying to, to Ayaz, listen man, I see your enemies different than you. You think it's the end. I see two sticks of wood just smoldering and smoking. Don't be worried. But Ayaz, he's a clever guy, probably back to the bakery, <laughs> making himself feel a little better. Um, he, he, keeps, he keeps hold of this deep worry. And he's, he's very nervous. So a second time, God comes. Again, the prophet. This time, much more clearly. The first time he just said, stay calm. Now God says, I mean, as clear as daylight. God says through the prophet, I declare this will never happen. I mean, how much more clarity can you get than God saying, this is not going to happen. This is not the end. And Ahaz still doesn't get it. He doesn't accept the invitation to step into this space where faith nurtures the, the glory of God to change the situation. 
And I can see the tension in, in God's heart just building up. And then this, this 10 and 11, God sends the prophet again, third time, third time lucky. Now the prophet comes to Ahaz and, 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 and many of our English translations, we kind of struggle in understanding this verse and please bear with me as, as we try to figure out. He says the following, he says, and the Lord God will give you a sign. It can be from deep in the world of the dead or high up in, if you know what this means, I mean, you probably have like big degrees in theology. I don't know what it means. It, it's, it's uh, and I must be very careful. I once, uh, it's an idiom, but I once said it's an idiot uh, because it's very much the same word and coming from Afrikaans, I made this. So this is, this is both an idiom and an idiot um, in the same package. And uh, what, what does this mean? But Eugene Peterson in the message kind of went into just navigating us through this verse as he says the following and let this grip your heart this morning as the prophet says to Ayaz. Ask, ask from a sign from God. Listen to this. Ask anything. Be extravagant. Ask for the moon. I mean, how much more clarity do you need to understand that God is inviting Ahaz into the space where faith has the possibility of changing all known reality. Have you ever asked God for the moon? I mean, how crazy is that? Ask you, you know, the moon, if, if we look at the moon, it is probably, it is the biggest thing that we can see with our eyes. It's the biggest object that we can see in totality with our eyes. We can even see some of its details. There's larger stars, many, many larger stars, but we can't see them in the same way that we see the moon. The moon is also very, very, uh, a, a strong power on this planet. The moment, if, sh if the moon should move, all those very conspiracy kind of theory movies, if the moon should, mo should move or disappear, everything on this planet will change, like sea tides and where, where the ocean is. Charlotte might even like be a coastal town if, if the moon moves. So what Eugene Peterson is capturing here is something of God saying, I'm inviting you into this space of unlimited possibility. It's a space of unlimited possibility because God knows that his glory is center in this moment. That's why he's not afraid. He's not intimidated by the reality of the moment. Ask for the moon. But you know what's the tra tragedy in this story? So Ahaz hears this. He understands this. This is God's invitation but listen to verse 12, and Ahaz answered, I will not ask for a sign. I refuse to put God to the test. I mean, can someone please come beat up this guy? Because he's not getting it. He's not getting it. This amazing, loving God inviting him into a space to say, whatever you can ask, Whatever you can imagine, whatever you can conjure up to say this is possibilities, I will match that. Ask me for the moon. I, lo I love that word extravagance. Be extravagant. Be extravagant. And I, I says, oh no, no, I won't go there. I won't put pressure on God. How beautifully religious, but also sickening. And then, and this is where this scripture gets, now you have to, we, Isaiah changes gears so quickly. I mean, this, this is like crazy. He moves forward so fast. And out of this moment of Ahaz's pathetic response, God says the following, well then, uh, it's just a comment here, verse 13. <laughs> it's actually terrible that God says, you're wearing out my patience. <laughs> I don't want to go there. I want to make a sermon of it, but just to say, I mean, in the invitation of this God saying, can you, can you understand that if faith steps onto the scene, everything changes? 
And God says, you, you are making me tired. You're making me tired. And then he says the following, verse 14. He says, well, the Lord himself will give you a sign. A young woman who is pregnant will have a son and will name him Emmanuel. Yo, now, it's moving forward very quickly. This is just a moment. Ayaz struggling, God inviting, moving to the space. Ayaz, don't invite again, nothing. Ask for the moon, be extravagant, man. Just wake up. No response. God saying, you're making me tired. And then he comes and he says the following. He says, there's nothing bigger, more life-giving, more perspective changing, more transformation in this world than understanding that being part of, the, being included in this picture of the coming of Christ. That will be the wave that changes everything. Why is he going there? Why? This is a prophecy. 800 years before the coming of Christ. This is God saying, you know, guys, we sometimes get so stuck in the small little things of trusting God for this and depending on God for this and then maybe, maybe trusting for this and we go through this struggle of faith. But what God is saying, that even the biggest thing that you and I can ask, God has already provided a bigger answer. God already provided in the coming of his son that day that this world was surprised that God came into our world as a baby. That was the day that God said, no matter what you ask, you see faith in this God and in being included in this reality of the coming of Christ changes everything. That moment when Christ was on the cross and he said, it is finished. That moment when Christ ascended the throne and he said, I will make all things new. is the moment to what Isaiah was referring. He was talking about a new king, a Lord of all. He was talking about a reality that would change everything. You see, the wave is not our little dependence on God. The wave is God himself. It is his presence. It is the abundance that is in his heart. When we talk about faith, we are not talking about our little attempt to try to access and convince God to be good in a specific situation. When we talk about faith, we are talking about accessing the reality of the sum total of who God is. That is this faith. That is a wave that changes reality. That life that faith brings is not this mediocre second grave, grade life of an Adam. It is the victorious life in Christ. The perspective that faith brings is not something that says that certain things is impossible. Certain things cannot happen. Jesus came to show the picture that the dead can rise. That, he, that sick people can be healed. That hunger people, hungry people can be satisfied, can be filled. That this world can can change because of his glory. That is the perspective that faith carries. And then as God's glory enters the stage and we hear the voice of Pavarotti filling the room, we sense the largeness of the impact of who God is. We realize that God has a mission in making all things new. But the, the reality of the story is that you don't have to really ask God for the moon today. The moon is already in your backyard. The moon is right in your backyard because Christ came and he accomplished this work. He finished the project. He changed all of reality already. But if I do position myself like an Ayaz, like so many times I have, 
And so many times God's grace coming to knock on the door again, saying this will not happen. I declare this, is, this will not happen. I am with you. I am strong in your midst. I will fight the battle. Many times I did not respond to this invitation of faith. And many times I thought, you know, what would be the biggest moon I can ask God for? What would be the biggest thing you can ask God for this morning? I want to promise you, he has something even bigger in store. He already produced an answer in his son that will trump the biggest, biggest question you can ask God. No matter what your request, no matter what your heart, no matter what your struggle, God has already given his son. Emmanuel, God with us. Therefore, Habakkuk, act one, despair. Act two, faith enters. It opens the door for the glory of God. And then act three, as this prophet writes, though the fig tree does not bud and there's no fruit on the vines, though the olive crop fails and the fields produce no food, though the flocks disappear from the pen and then are no herds in the stalls, yet I will celebrate in the Lord. I will rejoice in the God of my salvation. The Lord my God is my strength. He makes my feet like those of a deer and enables me to walk on a mountain height. That is what it looks like when the wave of faith and the presence of God's glory enters into our world. I don't know what you're trusting God for this morning. Maybe it's something big. Maybe you like Ayaz. I'm trembling in the wind. Maybe you think it's impossible. But will you hear this God calling out and inviting you this morning to ask him for the moon to be extravagant. Ask anything. While the worship guys are coming forward, will you close your eyes as we go into a moment of prayer? Father, we can so easily today just run through this moment and miss the fact that that, that reality of your glory in the midst of chapter two realities, in the midst of challenge and woes and difficulty really changed everything. My prayer today, Lord, for every one of us listening would be that we discover the character of faith on the stage. Not just as a religious dependence, but as a reality that changes everything. Maybe this morning you're sitting there, want to stand up and you want to say, Lord, this is my moment. I want to ask for the moon. I think I'm ready now. I'm not going to be like an Ayaz. I'm not going to say no. And if you want to stand up this morning and just respond in this moment by saying, God, I'm trusting you for the moon. Even bigger than I can imagine. Even the biggest ask I can bring this morning. I know you will answer in a bigger way, but I'm stepping out and saying, Lord, I want to ask for the moon. 
I want to ask you to change all of reality. Will you please stand with me as I'm going to pray for you? Lord, we see this stage. It is set with brokenness and despair and lostness. But then the one that made it all, the one that changed all, took center stage. And with the abundance and the weight of who he is, opened the door for us to find salvation in eternity, but also in reality as we live now. We want to respond with extravagant hearts, with hearts filled with faith as we see everything change, as we see ourselves impacted by the oxygen of your presence, as we loosen ourselves and free from this, this reality of the loser of an Adam and we find ourselves in the victory of Christ and we find perspective in love and hope is born in our hearts looking at the future. We ask for the moon. We acknowledge that the moon has sparked in my backyard and nothing can stay the same. We pray this. Let us be filled, Lord. Fill our lungs, fill our hearts, fill our minds with faith. In Jesus' name, amen. We'll just keep standing as Henry is going to lead us in a song.
the sins of your days. And I've seen cancer disappear. I've seen broken bodies heal. Don't you tell me he can do it. Don't you tell me he can do it. I've seen a real life resurrection. I've seen mental health show. But don't you tell me he can do it. Don't you tell me. Come on, church, lift it up. And I've seen families reunited. I've seen prodigals return. Don't you tell me. was talking like what a beautiful picture of the, the ask for the moon and then the moon there it is in your backyard and I had this this image thinking about this story in Mark where this man that doesn't really know the, the authority and the power that resides in Jesus which is most of our story right and he comes needing a miracle for his son and he says Jesus if you can and Jesus says if I can all things are possible And then I have lived in the moment that happened next where the man's response was, I believe. And then he said, but help my unbelief. It's like this wrestling, God gave permission for this story to be captured and live through generations that there is the wrestling of, I believe, help my unbelief. God, I believe you can can bring the moon. But then you think, but then there's that thing in my life that's like, I don't know if God will actually do it. I believe. Help my unbelief. That's what I was sitting there praying and thinking at the end of this. God, I believe what Donnie's talking about. God, help my unbelief. Whatever it is in your life, whatever the thing is, I believe. Help my unbelief. Uh, Man, I want to thank Donnie. I was a little disappointed at his lack of passion. Um, But other than that, it's pretty good. Thank you, brother, for ministering to us today. I want to... I want to say a prayer for uh, Dan. Dan's one of our pastors. His mom today, uh, emergency, I stepped on stage just kind of to help to let him kind of sort his heart and mind. But uh, his mom is, uh, had to go to the hospital today. And so I just want to take a moment, say a prayer over uh, Dan and his family. And then I want to give you a couple things. We'll go our separate ways. Father, we recognize that you're a God of healing. You're a God of grace. You're a God that moves things that we simply cannot. So I pray for Dan, pray for his family. I pray for his mother. I pray for healing and 
God, you are the healer, and I pray that you would do it as only you can. I pray that you bring comfort and peace. We ask this in the precious and the powerful name of Jesus, and you say that we're two or more gathered in your name, that you are there among us, that when we come to you in prayer, there's powerful things that happen. And while I can't explain that, God, I draw on that, and I believe that. And so we ask for that today on behalf of our brother. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. One last thing before we go. Um, Again, if you're new, welcome to this place where we want to build something beautiful that spans generations. And you're on the front side of that. So come with us. Partner with us. Be a part of volunteering. Be a part of being generous to this place. Now, I can't speak to the spiritual nature of this, but I can tell you that uh, we had more people at Trunk or Treat last year than we did at our Easter services. So I'm not bragging, but I'm just telling you that we live in a culture where sometimes it's just a first step that leads to life change. So these are sitting out back. Will you invite someone? Maybe come, and you'll be one of the ones that decorates your vehicle and goes crazy. I'm going to be here doing that, and we're going to serve people. We're going to love people. We're going to be integrated in our community, and we're going to redeem something that meant something bad in the early days, and we're going to redeem it. Listen, we get to take all the days back as Christians. We're going to redeem it. We're going to invite people to experience God's goodness, and we're going to create community. It's going to be beautiful. And so grab one of these, invite someone to come be a part. Hey, we love you guys. Have a great rest. Did you want to say something else? I might as well. I'm here. Uh, guys, you might not know it, but it's Chris Brown's birthday today. God bless you, brother. We appreciate it. God bless you all. Give him a hug. <laughs>